Hey Tori sisters, it's Amy. This is a different sort of video, but I want to show you this giant timeline that me and my kids use as a learning tool. I posted it on Facebook today because we broke it out today for our history class and people thought that was just the neatest thing. So I thought I would do a show and tell video. I'm going to post the link to this on Amazon down below. It, right, right now it's running around $34. It is worth every penny. Now, before I show you this, please know this is not a history class. <laughs> I am not a history expert by any means. I understand the importance of knowing history well, but I don't feel like I know history well. But the history that I do know now is in thanks a great deal to this timeline. So don't think that I'm showing you this because I know everything. <laughs> I don't, but I love this. My kids love it. Every time we pull this out, it just starts discussions. And it and it's a Bible timeline along with world history. So everything is side by side, up and down. You can see everything chronologically, which you can just imagine. It just starts so many neat discussions. So I'm just sort of, I'm gonna to try to turn the camera. I'm gonna to try to hold a little bit still. Sorry if it's choppy and sorry about my messy house, but I just wanna show you the highlights of this so that if you get it, you kind of just know where to start. Um, because now that you guys have come to Torah and a lot of you like were just hungry to know more truth and this can just help sort of fit the pieces together. Um, a lot of us, you know, you grow up in Sunday school learning a Bible story here and a Bible story there and then you go to history class and you learn a history thing here and a history thing there enough to pass a test. But how does it all fit together? So here's how this works. So this thing is ginormous. Of course, it starts at creation and up at the top are the main, I guess I would describe it as the main Bible characters. And those um, are like tree trunks, right? Wah! See, it's so big. So it starts with Adam and Eve with the main tree trunk and then it splits down. And of course, Abel's trunk ends <laughs> prematurely. And so those trunks just go down and down and down. So you can see where someone, okay, so here's Noah who was born to Lamech, who was born from Methuselah. Now the cool thing is you can see contemporaries. So I can come down here and I can see that Noah uh, was alive at the same time as Terah and that he was alive at the same time as Haran and Nahor. Wait, did I lose Noah's line? Yeah, so Noah is the green line. Oh, so he died right here. So he could have passed on stories to Nahor or to Terah, Abram's father. Do you see that? Do you see how just having the visuals of this reinforces that the Bible is true? That the stories that were passed down orally at the beginning, they were not written down. The Torah was passed down orally to Moses who wrote it down and you can see how it can all be completely accurate because some people challenge the Bible and they'll say, oh, it would have been so many generations that would have, the truth would have been twisted and messed up. Oh, no, no. These men were contemporaries with just very few deaths in between. So in this part up here, it shows that Adam could have told it to Methuselah, who could have told it to Shem, who could have told it to Isaac, who was also alive at the time of Levi, Kohath, Amram, who could have told it to Moses. So just five links, you have the truth of scripture passed down until Moses wrote it down. So that right there is just amazing to look at with our eyes. It helps us to put it together. Another cool thing about this is um, this black line here shows the centuries and then split up by 10 year intervals. And here it splits it up into, I guess, one year intervals. But below that, below the actual year timeline, it shows the um, lineal lineage of Messiah. Adam, Seth, um, Enos, and it goes down. So you can follow. So these are obviously duplicates because Adam is also listed up here. But he's duplicated down here with another trunk to show a special line below this squiggly back line that just shows the lineage of Messiah. 
and that goes all the way down. Sorry if this is wiggly. Okay, so we're to the rainbow. So Noah, Shem, all the way down. Terah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah. Judah's descendants. It keeps going. Now I got to move my... This is tricky. <laughs> I'm going to turn the page, but I can't stretch it out. So I'm in Boaz, Obed, Jesse, David, Solomon. It keeps on going. So we're following just this one line, the lineage of Messiah. It goes and goes and goes and goes, goes and goes and goes. And of course, this is all straight from scripture. Jacob, Joseph, Yeshua. Okay? So that's a really cool feature of this, is me and my kids can look visually and see the lineage of Yeshua. Now, interspersed in here, so up here is the Bible timelines, right? From here to here is all Bible. The bottom part of this is, I guess, more world history. And I'm just going to give you a quick intro into how this works. So world history <laughs> really... Is there's nothing written. So all we have is Bible history up until the flood. And that's when things really start to get busy in the world. So right after the flood, of course, is the Tower of Babel. And because the languages were confused, boom, now we have all these new tree trunks coming off the Tower of Babel. If I back up, maybe you can see that. So see before, there's no real other nations other than what we know about um, the Bible families. After the flood, you have the babel, and then boom, look at all these new tree trunks. I call them tree trunks. I don't know what they're supposed to be called. <laughs> um, one to note is we can see, right away, we can see Mitzrayim, or Egypt. And it's not called, well, I guess it's called Mitzrayim at the beginning. And it reminds us, a descendant of Ham in the Egypt. So Ham is listed now in two places, because Ham is also listed up towards the top in one of these tree trunks and sometimes the colors match but then he also we show where his descendants take off down here in their place in world history all right and so that tree trunk goes here and then they become well they build the pharaoh the pyramids and egypt's history keeps going here now and then you have the chaldeans and babylon and the greeks the asian tree trunk which gets really interesting and huge later. But again, I'll show you just one part of, let's start with Chaldea, the Chaldea tree trunk. You can follow this down and you can see this little trunk attached to it. And you go, well, what's this little trunk attached to this, these people group of Chaldea who came from Nimrod, by the way, okay, from Nimrod. And that tree trunk is labeled Abraham. So Abraham is called out of Ur at 75 and he goes to Canaan. So his tree trunk leaves this people group, this nation people, and goes way up here to this line of Canaan, the descendants of Canaan. So now Abraham is up here with these people for a while and then you know the story, he goes to e Egypt. So his tree trunk squiggles down here and it joins the Egyptian. Remember this line is Egypt or Mizraim. And then he goes back to Canaan and then so his people are there and his people are there and his people are there and then he has Isaac so the tree trunk turns green to represent Isaac and then we see Joseph the look at this little tree trunk focus so there's this trunk that comes off of Isaac's line and goes back to Egypt well that's Joseph remember Joseph went to Egypt before the rest of the family so Joseph is in Egypt for a while and then look at the, what happens to Isaac's and Jacob's here is going to start to be called Jacob, right? His entire family goes to Egypt. And so then you have Joseph and Jacob's son, and all of them are in Egypt for this whole time until we get to Moses. And that says Moses. And then what happens to all of the Israelites now? Because now they're a whole nation called Israel, right? Well, they're not yet. No, they were called Israel. So then they leave Egypt. So they're leaving the Egypt. This isn't meant to be a map you know, um, a map of ge geography exactly, but it's a map that shows people groups. So they leave the people group of Egypt and they wander in the wilderness until they get back to Canaan, to the promised land. 
So this, and that's just one example of so much information that you can see on this. You can see it with your eyes. And so every time we pull this out, my kids and I, we just pick another different thing to read. Like you can read about the wonders of the world or um, Nineveh, traditions about Babel, um, things like this. And there's just so much in here. It goes up until, and I love the pictures because it gets my kids engaged. Sometimes, you know, they'll look at the pictures and I'll read them the stuff. So it shows Homer. It shows the tabernacle being built. Um, just different historical events that happened. I thought this is cool today. I, we noticed that this is when Pythagoras, you know, the founder of the pa pa multiplication table and Pythagorean theorem, he was, I didn't realize this, a contemporary with Daniel. Pythagoras and Daniel. Um, so it's just really, really neat. And look at all these tree trunks that go up and down from the kings because the kings got went to different nations and stuff like you can just follow this through and you're just like you're following the old testament which you are it's really beautifully done and then yeshua is born i mean look and so when the tree trunk gets huge you can see empires get huge so this empire turns into the roman empire and this empire gets swallowed in and actually probably these ones first right so this one is part of the roman empire and then all these empires roman the romans just took over all of these other people groups or nations and so that the Roman Empire was that huge. So the pink area from here, you can't even see my finger here, all the way up to there is the Roman Empire. And so you can see why in the prophecies of Daniel and the statues and stuff, God tells the people about these big huge empires and their demise. So here's another example. Um, this empire, this one, here's Nebuchadnezzar which then branches out in Persia, the Persian Empire, which swallowed up all of these other people groups or empires or nations, whatever you want to call them. There's so much, so you can see prophecy being fulfilled in this timeline. And then as we're now up to the sixth century and Ireland and the Saxons are coming into being in France and Germany. Well, I mean, they were always there, I guess, but with new names. And you can see the, um, British Empire is huge and influential, influential, but then starts to break down and these little people groups get their own identity again. So they get their own tree trunks. A lot of Catholic stuff and we start to get into the 11 and the 1200s. And it goes all the way up to 1900. The timeline stops at the year 1900. And up here you can see some of the founding fathers of our country well, of the United States <laughs> and the colonies and when the colonies were founded in the United States and then again, the rest of the world. So this is, and you can see big events, like our kids should know when the printing press was invented, the Gutenberg Bible first printed, they should know that, that was huge. Um, there's just so many important events in here that our kids, and we should know. <laughs> and, Folks, don't be intimidated. You know, we sit around with all these smart people at fellowship and stuff, and we'll never know as much as the next guy. But it just starts with little pieces, and this is one of those little pieces, a tool that I just have really valued. Now, I should have said this at the beginning. There are other really great timelines, and if you know of some, leave a comment and tell us what is your favorite timeline. There's a circle one that's a poster that you can put on your wall and I see a great value in that because this is really hard to, you know, stretch out. Um, but if you have another favorite timeline, tell us about it. And I'm sure none of these are perfect. Like, don't start yelling at me that he wasn't on a cross like that. <laughs> Whatever. None of these are perfect. But they can be very useful to, uh, tools to supplement the Word of God. So read the Word of God more than anything. But this can be a neat tool. And... It's not just for kids. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is not just for kids. So if you have questions or thoughts or anything, leave comments. I hope that this was helpful and not dumb. So I was intimidated by making this. I'm like, oh, they're going to think I'm so dumb because I'm going to say things wrong. 
but I'm learning to not be afraid and just it might help some of you because someone told me about this there was a time at which I didn't know something like this existed someone told me or I saw it at their house or something so maybe I can just be the one to tell you about this cool thing so and if you have this and you love it tell us about it tell us something cool that you learned from it because there's just so many little neat nuggets here all right that's all bye sisters